In today's video, we'll look at how an Airfly Pro controlling vMix can be combined with wonderful USB devices from Xkeys, especially those that can work as GPIO triggers. This little USB stick kind of has a jack in the end and you can insert a simple switch to, for instance, start, stop streaming or make a cut or select a source on active or preview bus on your vMix system. So let me show you what we are looking at today. The, the one thing is this one, it's called XK3 and it has the ability of accepting three uh, GPI inputs. And apart from that, we have this switch interface. It's very much the same. It has basically six inputs and they are two channel. And to plug into these, X keys are able to deliver these uh, special, um, it's not a dome button, but it's actually pretty nice little switch that would be super handy to mount all kinds of places. Very good thinking. So they can be plugged into the XK3 or into the um, switch interface here that has uh, all USB that you can connect into the backside of the Airfly Pro. You see on the back side of these units there is a USB-A port and that USB-A port accepts even a USB hub. So you could have a USB hub in between. We won't do that today but I do that in many other videos where I demonstrate this. The Airfly Pro is one of our most popular controllers and um, it's, it's really really cool. You see we have uh, displays that will always show you the labels of sources in vMix or ATEM switches or whatnot have uh, probably the best and coolest T-bar uh, on the planet here. And um, a section for transition control with cut, auto, fade to black, shift, and so on. Uh, overlays up here in the corner. Now, this is actually, yes, a little section for PVC control as well, where you can enable, I think, you can basically enable PVC control there. So you can add cameras and also then come back to selecting um, transitions, etc., on the Airfly Pro. Very, very popular controller. So now even smarter, cooler, because you can add additional functionality as you want. They also, X-Keys, have a um, HD 15Y interface. And that is, in my opinion, basically much the same, but different pinout. So there you have a connector. You can probably benefit from this in different types of installations and so on. And uh, with me today, I have a few more switches. This is a splitter cable that allows me to connect two switches to the same XK3 interface. And uh, then over here, um, this is a switch where you can actually put your own graphics in the cap of the switch itself. So that was a little bit tour of what we are dealing with today. But we will use this one and uh, I'll also put in the splitter cable and then I will start out with the, the red button, which I will connect to one of these channels, probably this one. Uh, I already set up everything so that the um, Airfly Pro controls vMix already. Um, let's let's try it out so you are aware what we are dealing with here. We have vMix right here. So now I'll press, uh, I'll select a preview source. So you see I'm as I'm pressing buttons, I'm selecting preview. I can also select program by pressing buttons here. All right. And I can press the cut button, which I'll do now to make a cut. So this is a run over team view on my vMix computers. Actually in our headquarters, I'm in my home office. We're running all of this over a VPN. There you go. Inside packages tab, we need to install the, um, we can search X keys because then you have a small application called X panel X keys that will pop up. We need to install this guy because that is what supports the various X keys devices that you can attach to the USB port. We also need to go to the settings and enable USB on the Airfly Pro. You need to do that because it swaps between the micro USB port, which is for service um, considerations, and then we need to reboot the device. So with this in mind, we will have to wait for about 30 seconds at this point. We are now back online again. And if we go to packages, we see the X keys application is running. If I click into it, you will also notice that the raw panel for XK3 switch interface is enabled and something called quarantine is engaged. This is because it's a licensed application. On our wiki, we have this article on X keys and it will tell you everything about the devices we support. You see these are more or less all the devices you would know. And there we have the XK3 switch interface. 
We have these various other types of switch interfaces also supported, etc. How it works is explained here with license and everything else. So please go read this uh, page. But now I think we can go back here and you'll see the quarantine is lifted for 10 minutes. So we have 10 minutes of free play. So let's see if we can complete the video in this time. All right. So um, what, what I will basically do is to go back here and then I'll add a new panel. And discovering panels will make the XK uh, switch interface pop up, which I'll then select. And then it's basically adding that to the configuration. Yes. So um, I will now create a custom configuration, give it a name, X keys. Let's go to the configuration tab and see what we have in here. This is the Airfly Pro and the X keys XK3. It has GPI 1, 2, and 3, which are the different um, buttons that we can attach to it. So uh, we'll be configuring GPI number one. And the configuration we should choose is the one called X keys that we just created. We have background layer here. And actually, what you're looking at right now is Reactor 2.0. That is a page-based paradigm where you can create multiple pages just like you would configure a Stream Deck. Super, super easy. So for this one, it would be th multiple pages you could create for those three GPI pins. I think you only need the background in this case because, yeah, unless you want to do m complex layers and, and menus on your X keys GPI or device, I think it's not necessary. Click. And what we basically need to do is to go over to vMix and then pick whatever it is we want to control on it. So in this case, let's just uh, browse for a cut action. So we'll make a cut, cut action on our little uh, red key here. And uh, the mix row we need to pick would be then mix number one. And I think this is all we need to do. So guys, let's just um, find the team viewer again so we can see if this is actually working i press the button cut 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 every time i press the red button i wonder what the red button does but now i know we can add the green button as well so that would then be on the second channel so i'll just add the, the green button We're plugging the jack into the cable here on the xk3 in the simulator, you can also simulate these um, uh, actions, basically. So if you if you click this one, the first one, that you'll see the simulation of the, the first GPI point. The next one, I'm currently pressing it. Nothing is happening because we have not configured it yet. So let's just go back here, choose GPI 2, the green button, figure out what we want to do on that. Now, in this case, I want to show you a, a way you could build a little reset functionality, for instance. Let's say that what we wanted to do is to reset the the, the, the vmix installation so that it has a particular source on active and another one on uh, preview as you press this button. So you, we can build a multi-behavior for that. So let's first set, uh, here it's called program, but it's the what you know as active on mix number one. We'll pick an input and just pick input number one here. What we can do at this point is to add a behavior so that we also set the preview row. So we'll do that and the behavior we add would be set preview. Again, set it on mix row here and set the preview to the value two, for instance. So um, let's just quickly study what's happening here. So adding having a multi-behavior basically means that it will do both of these simultaneously, more or less. Well, it will be sequential. First, it will set program, then it will set preview. And you can even add delays in between if you want. And if this one had had displays, like you see all those nice display that we put on all our controllers for the buttons to make them really flexible, then you can also define if, if feedback should come from one of these sub behaviors, if you will, or if it should come from like custom feedback that is governing the whole multi behavior. So now you also introduce to multi behaviors in the context of Reactor 2.0. Super cool, isn't it? Okay, let's go to the simulator so that we can really see what is uh, going on here. Um, maybe let's just simulate it at first, assuming that we don't have it. So I click and there you see we get uh, the active and the preview source set. As anticipated, let's just quickly change it and then click. I get it all done by this GPIO button from X keys. Really wonderful. You could actually go ahead and have this a three splitter cable and add another button if you want, or you can plug in these wire interfaces and do it through these as well. Let's just see how that would actually pop up. Now you have seen the main functionality of how this would work easily adding GPIO to an Airfly Pro. So now I'm going to pull it out. And if we go to the home screen, you'll probably see that it gets disconnected the moment I do it. So now let's take the HD15 wire interface and add to the USB port here. 
So um, by doing so, then if we go into the add panel dialog, we are probably going to see it pop up um, on the network. So this is MDNS discovered. But before it actually happened, again, the package called XPanel X keys is responsible for actually picking these up. So as I'm adding or subtracting them from the USB bus, they will appear here. So if I pull this out again, you can see that it, it stopped uh, working with this one. Now I put it in once again. And now we can go back to the home screen. If we search for panels, then we will see that we have this, as we saw before, it's popping up. Um, it is represented graphically, like it actually looks in real life. This is the, the switch interface. The other one was the HD15 that has a different connector, but it's sort of the same device. And it has this um, ability to announce its topology, how it looks and which features it has. So inside of a simulator, you can now see that we have this HD15 added in addition to, and we could now start configuring that as well. So maybe we want to do that, but on the home screen, we still need to create a custom configuration for it. So HD15 like this. All right, we can go into the config interface and there we will select this HD15 configuration. Now we have input, uh, different inputs. We have one, two, and three. That's probably port six and seven. Let me see. Um, so that is the HD15. Okay, I think the inputs are, yeah, port six and seven. This is the internal mentions that um, X keys are using, but I think the tip is probably the one that we could configure to something exactly like we did a moment ago on the vMix. So let's just um, assign cut. That would be super quick and easy. So let's do that and then move over here. So now if I press this one, in my simulator, click, 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 that would be like cut. So the question is if on the HD15 wire interface, if I plug in maybe this one where I could print out a label myself, plug it into one of these ports and maybe we'll see that this is actually the tip of that one. Once again, you can plug in a splitter cable to have multiple switches into these all together. It's super flexible using the X keys, USB driven GPIO devices to do this. And they even have one that also has outputs for relays, which uh, needs to be configured on Windows. So you set up which direction the different pins on the um, connectors has. But you can read more about that on the Wiki page. Thanks for watching this video and hope it was inspiring you to how flexible you can set up your um, infrastructure with Skyhoy controllers and basically making modular approaches to control like we facilitate with these solutions. So um, watch um, the next video, subscribe to our channel, follow us on social media and write to innovationlab at skyhoy.com if you have questions and comments.